When it comes to the Sierra 450 RL, there are two truths. The throttle response is way too jerky and the only fix for it is an ECU that's either yellow, green, or pink. But are these two truths in fact a lie? Personally, and I'll say this right up front, it's a lie. However, I do agree that the throttle response is pretty jerky from factory, but in my years of ownership, I've come up with a number of modifications that, in my opinion, I think help to aid that jerky throttle response without having to chuck 700 to 1,000 plus dollars at this bike. Now, these mods all range in price from a couple hundred dollars all the way down to free 99. Even on the high end, it's still a fraction of the cost of any used Vortex out there you can find. However, I added these mods as I discovered them, and my question is, which one has the greatest effect? Could I have gotten away with one of these and Got the handling that I wanted. So let's remind ourselves what these mods are, what they accomplish, and then we'll get into some testing. Can't beat free. This is the throttle tube mod. Essentially what this does is it shaves off the cam from zero to quarter throttle. This aims to tame the jerkiness in the throttle off the line, arguably where it's needed the most, and it only takes a Dremel in a few minutes. You could also chuck out about $85 or so, whatever it is, for the G2 ergonomics throttle tamer, but this does essentially the same thing. And need I remind you, it's free. This is the jutter spring replacement. In short, this replaces the small friction plate and jutter spring in the back of your clutch pack with a standard sized thicker one. This one doesn't exactly handle the jerky throttle response. However, it does apply some characteristics to the clutch engagement, and who knows, maybe that's enough for someone to be able to handle the low-speed throttle response. Next up is the RSC clutch lever. Now, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting this, even if you do have an ECU. This probably has the most impact on the throttle response with its smooth movement, and it also has further enhancement to the clutch engagement. And finally, the closest alternative to an actual ECU, JD Jetting Power Surge. This is a fuel controller, not an ECU. A lot of people will confuse this for being the same as an ECU or solving the same problem that an ECU does, but not so. This is a piggyback, and so what that means is that it's actually just plugged in line between the existing ECU and the fuel injector. Rather than actually adjusting the mapping and the programming, like an aftermarket ECU does, this just adjusts the rate at which fuel is delivered at different throttle responses. One of the biggest elements of the jerky throttle response is in the original ECU programming where it actually cuts off fuel when the throttle is closed. A fuel controller can help around that, but adjustments to zero fuel is still zero fuel. Now, as I said, I've only put on these mods just as I discovered them, or as I discovered that I could pay for them, never one at a time. So we're going to test each of these one by one to gauge their effectiveness. And we're going to do that with a test route, one that covers all the bases. We'll start the test route right here with a fast straight from a stop to go through all the gears and all the speeds. And along this test route, I figured I'd add a few challenges here and there. This is one of the steepest grades in the entire county, and so I figured why not add something like a 10 mile an hour challenge to see how maneuverable it is. And we take a quick detour through one of the local neighborhoods here for a series of start stops, just enough before the neighbors get mad at the noise. And we can't forget about twisty, some of the tightest stuff around here. Some of this is 15 mile an hour turns. We're really gonna find out how well things handle. So the plan is gonna be first to take off all the mods so the bike is 100% stock. Then I'm gonna run the test loop with one of each of the four at a time and see which ride is best. All right, here we go. Back to 100% stock. Let's see how this feels. I'm realizing right away that I think the biggest impact that I can feel are both the clutch and the throttle. The throttle is really snappy and the clutch lever is really heavy like I haven't ridden that far like maybe only a mile so I've only done a little bit of shifting but still I feel the strain in my fingers already I don't know what that has to say if it's either a stiff clutch or just that my fingers are not very strong all right first slow speed challenge I decided to try it at five because it's a little bit more of an issue there than ten and I can feel my arms bracing like it's not undoable, but that was definitely not easy. Like if I was on a very rocky single track going uphill, that would be absolute misery. I'm sure I would have stalled out at any point on that. I don't know if you can hear that, but the exhaust is sputtering a little bit because of the JD jetting since I turned everything off. I don't really feel a difference, but it's just weird that you can hear that when it's idling. Probably not the best. All right, here we go, start stop time. Nothing too difficult about all the start stops, just, again, you just feel it a little bit more in your fingers. I would say not enough to care, but 
enough to notice. All right, here we go. Start of the twisties where it all comes together. The throttle response, whoa, is a little twitchy. I'm a little too used to the throttle tamer mod that I did myself than this stock tube. So you have to be a little bit careful coming out of these corners. There was one or two there where I goosed it just a little bit too much and the rear kind of twitched a little bit. All right, now we got our 100% stock run in the books. Next, we're gonna go back to the garage and start putting things on one by one. I think I'm gonna go from the cheapest option, which is free, all the way up to the JD Jetting, the most expensive. That one's about 250 bucks. Thankfully, the throttle is so easy to swap out. It's basically like a little pit stop. I don't know how the other mods are gonna do. But this one, look at that. And in no time flat, we have our throttle tube and we'll get back at it. Now the findings, and we started off with the throttle mod and right off the bat, huge difference. It really goes to show that taking off just a little bit of plastic makes a whole lot of difference. So much easier with the throttle on this one. I can almost keep it consistent and then just kind of feather the clutch. Although because I'm feathering the clutch more, I'm really feeling it in my fingers. A really good start overall. I was really happy to discover all the slight nuances. Another thing I noticed with the throttle tube that I haven't previously is that this compared to the stock one, I'm actually holding my wrist a little bit lower. And that's because when you're just cruising like this, you're really at like eighth to a quarter throttle and that's where the input was tamed. I don't think it's a hindrance at all. It's just weird that I noticed it now. Next, we took things to the RSC clutch lever and it was really interesting because coming right off of the throttle mod to the clutch lever, I found that I was getting the exact same experience except the only difference was it was going from my right hand to my left hand. It's almost like I have the opposite problem now. I'm able to maintain the clutch a lot more, but the throttle, yeah, that throttle is just way too twitchy. I didn't think I'd notice any differences when it came to the start stop stuff, but I gotta say with the clutch lever, it's so much easier. That strain-free clutch. Oh, I can't live without it. Now for the big one, the one that arguably matters most, JD Jetting fuel controller. I think I pointed this out on the stock run, but you can actually hear a difference, at least in the idle, which makes sense. I mean, it's getting more fuel now at idle because it's set that way. That's how I programmed it, but it sounds much more consistent, much more what I expect it to actually sound like now. Off to a good start. The bike sounded noticeably healthier, but I was really surprised to find that's where it ended. Oh. <laughs> I was just gonna say the JD jetting does not help this hill climb. That's where the throttle tube and the clutch lever shine. Not the JD jetting. For the most part, anyway. You do notice the JD jetting just a little bit when you do start and stops. Still a little abrupt there. Right about now, I wish I had the throttle tamer and or the clutch lever. Those are much, much more needed in this tight stuff. In the interest of time and with a very hot engine over all these runs, I decided to go with the judder spring replacement last. And yeah, that was surprising. Well, now we're on the judder spring replacement run. And if I had to choose just one of these runs, one of these combinations that was the worst, it would be this, because that forgiving clutch feel that the judder spring provides kind of helps to aid, I think, a little bit, the throttle and the clutch lever. So now it's just, it's really bitey. As snappy as it is changing gears, it's actually not terrible on the uphill slow challenge. But as you can probably hear, that clutch engagement is much more of an off on switch. Without that judder spring kind of helping out where the clutch lever and the throttle aren't, it really sucks with constant start stop. All things considered, this configuration right here is by far the jerkiest. Are you gonna cross the road or not? Come on, buddy. Things you have to wait for in these neck of the woods. Conclusion time. I was pleasantly surprised at the effectiveness of these mods and that each one of them had their own kind of unique benefits. The throttle mod and the clutch both made handling dramatically better. Honestly, you could choose either one. I guess it depends on which hand you prefer. Judder spring replacement was by far the worst. Yes, clutch engagement was much more predictable, but that judder spring vagueness really helps when you have a punchy throttle. I would definitely not recommend doing just this mod on its own, unless you're a glutton for punishment. Then we get to the most expensive and and by far the most popular alternative to Vortex and the like. JD Jetting did make some overall improvements throughout the entire rev range. It sounded very healthy for the bike, but shockingly little when it came to handling. So if you have a stock exhaust and you're just trying to take the edge off of that jerky throttle response, the answer is clear. 
throttle mod. Most effective, most notable improvements, and at free 99, it's got the trifecta. Second most is the RSC clutch lever. In my two year review, I said this was the best mod that I did in the last year, and it's clear why. JD jetting is surprisingly in third place. This will have the most improvement overall, but it's surprising that it's not felt overall. If handling is the only concern of yours, then JD jetting is not for you. That said though, if you're gonna have an aftermarket exhaust, then you definitely wanna add this plus anything else that you see on the table. And last but certainly least, jetter spring replacement. Don't get me wrong, I actually really like the predictive stability in the clutch engagement with this, but this is a side dish compared to the main courses, if you know what I mean. Now that that's all said and done, we should really compare this to what matters.